Hello guys and welcome to this HSM Quick Tip video. My name is Alex Alvarez, Application Engineer here at Continue Technologies. And for today's video, we're gonna be talking about the parallel versus the morph toolpath and some scenarios of when you would use one or the other. So let's take a look at this part first. Notice that we do have a setup already created, right? We have our stock defined, but let's take a look at what's going on, right? So some of these edges are gonna be parallel to the x-axis. Right, And that's really where the parallel toolpath shines because again, it's gonna be going in direction of the x-axis, right? Of course, you're gonna find some sort of angle, uh, but it's always gonna be best if you, you know which angle you have your part set up relative to that x-axis, right? So again, if we apply the parallel toolpath, starting off with our tool first, giving it some sort of a selection boundary, and then giving it a finer step over. Right, so gives us a nice toolpath. Again, parallel toolpath is gonna to be a great surfacing strategy, but what happens when we have something more of a curved surface, right? So let's go ahead and copy that parallel toolpath and paste it into this current setup and then define a few selections here, right? So instead of that machine boundary that we had, we want this one over here on the top. Click OK. And here's our parallel toolpath, right? So again, it doesn't look too bad, but again, we want a toolpath that's gonna accentuate the surface of our model, right? So take a look at what's going on. We have some pretty linear toolpaths here, and then towards the bottom here, it starts collapsing a little bit and then it starts giving us some sort of parabolic toolpath, right? So again, that's not gonna be really the, the, the best looking toolpath that we have. It's not gonna give us a nice surface finish. Uh, and we want something that's a little bit more efficient, right? Or something like that, we want to go ahead then and try the morph toolpath. So again, selecting the morph toolpath, we're gonna to be using the same tool. Notice that this time we have something a little bit different, right? So the first selection is gonna be some sort of a curve selection. Essentially that curve selection is telling the software, the toolpath, which curve are you gonna to use to drive that toolpath, right? So we want essentially this top curve here and this bottom curve, right? Machining boundary, I can go ahead and say selection and say I wanna go ahead and contain it to this boundary here. And again, giving it a finer step over generating that toolpath, and we can right away see that we have a much more efficient toolpath, right? Of course, we can do some surfacing here, extend the surface, and then make sure that we do indeed go past that surface. But nonetheless, it's a better looking toolpath overall. All right, so that's been the parallel versus the morph toolpath. Hope to help you guys.